The Horizon has been one of the most interesting manwas that I have ever read. It details the story of a boy and a girl as they journey across the war-torn world that was once their home. It's a simple and short story told very effectively. The name of the characters are descriptions rather than official names and I love this about The Horizon as it makes the story less personal about the characters and instead focuses on the impact of war from a general point of view. By not giving the characters names, it makes the characters seem less special as a result and in a story about the repercussions and suffering of war, this is perfect, as it makes it easier to relate and sympathize with these characters as they can be interpreted as just another ordinary person caught up in a war that had nothing to do with them. The Horizon opens on a brutal note that immediately establishes this dark and unforgiving tone that would linger throughout the manhwa, with the boy of the story attempting to bring his mother back to life by grabbing parts of her brain and attempting to put it back together, which is something only a child would try, with the Horizon doing a good job at showing how this affects him mentally with this scar him for life. Later on we're introduced to the girl, who the boy ends up meeting on a bus, and together they move forward. And this theme of moving forward is constant throughout the story and can be interpreted in multiple different ways. In one way it's the idea that if they keep moving forward they'll eventually escape the war and it can also be interpreted as never giving up, to continue pushing forward to a better future despite everything that's happened, which is a naive but hopeful goal. The story and art do a great job capturing that childlike behaviour throughout the manhwa as it helps to sell the characters you're seeing as children, especially when looking at their eyes compared to other characters which is much larger, a representation of how large they view the world and how innocent they are, especially when compared to other characters which adds another layer of detail onto the children and reinforces this message of naivety and innocence. Throughout their journey together they encounter multiple different people, the first of which is the strange man, with the boy being wary of the stranger while the girl is much more welcoming, which shows you how different their experience experiences have been up to this point as the boy knows how cruel some people can be. As we learn in her backstory that the girl has experienced nothing but kindness and selflessness in the face of not only war but also a deadly plague. And while initially it seems like the boy was wrong about the strange man, we quickly see that change in the span of mere moments, with him almost sexually assaulting the girl which is a clear indication that you never really know someone's true colours until you're at your most vulnerable. And while he is an awful person, it's also a reminder that war can be a spy for people to do these awful things when otherwise they probably wouldn't, as war can not only be a catalyst for death but can also leave broken people in its wake. The next person the boy and the girl encounter is the man in the suit, and when compared to the last person, he is much kinder and chooses to look after them. But as the girl would come to learn, the man is not that good of a person, as in war the good people will always die first, and those who are left will always do whatever it takes to survive regardless of whether it's moral or immoral. It's also during this encounter that the boy is tested by the man. He is presented with a chance to kill one of the soldiers who murdered his mother, but instead of reacting in rage and seeking vengeance on the man, he takes pity on him, showing that the boy still has some sympathy and humanity even after everything he's experienced. And we also know that when you take a life, you lose a part of yourself with it, and this part of yourself that you lose can be interpreted in many different ways. But judging by how the man in the suit behaves and talks to the other characters, I would wager a guess that it's humanity. He has lost the ability to have compassion for his enemies and has lost all sense of morals. Don't get me wrong, the man in the suit is still nice to those who are innocent like the main characters who are children, but the way he speaks and talks seems rather rigid and robotic. It lacks any sort of emotion at all, and this is a clear indication of how drastically war can affect ordinary people. We also learn that a little kindness can go a long way in the trying times of war as the girl frees a soldier from his bindings. So later on, when the girl on the boy are leaving, the soldier says not to kill them, repaying the girl for her kindness. From this, we move into the girl's backstory and we can see even in the harshest of times, people are still able to band together and survive, with this war only strengthening their relationship with one another and I love the manhwa's representation of this, as it shows humanity's ability to persist and band together to overcome any hardship, until something completely out of their control comes into the fold, a plague. And not only does this plague whittle down the number of survivors, but also the overall morale of the entire group, as the situation appears to grow more and more hopeless, with countless innocent lives being taken at the hands of this plague. And it's another reminder of the impact that war can have on people, as even if you aren't killed by soldiers or starvation, war can still lead to your death through many other means. The backstory also seamlessly transitions into where the boy and the girl met for the first time, which is something I appreciated, and also shows how even though the events of her backstory took place 
place in such a short amount of time, so much death took place. But my favorite aspect of this manhwa has to be its art. It is absolutely incredible. While the manhwa is rather minimalistic when compared to others, what it is able to do with its art is astonishing. Throughout every chapter, the color is constantly black and white, painting this dark and gritty world where there is no color and life anymore. It's as if all the happiness and joy was sucked from the world, a side effect of war and its brutality. The color can also be used to represent characters' emotional states, with a lot of the time it being rather neutral or locked away. As there are some moments of color that are used very sparingly, during moments where the characters are displaying intense emotions, with the first being happiness. Having a moment like this after so much destruction is not only satisfying but also important as it represents that even in destruction you can still find beauty in the world with the main characters sharing sweet but naive sentiments of their future life together a symbol of their hope and a reason to continue forward for each other and the old man they pass by moments after this is a symbol of someone whose hope and will to live has been crushed by war as instead of trying to move forward he sits still complacent with his life and has come to terms with his inevitable end. The symbolism throughout this manhwa was great, as during their journey they encounter a road end sign, which is pretty interesting symbolism as it foreshadows future events and goes against the boy and girl's ideals of continuing forward, as the boy and girl encounter another boy and girl exactly like them, probably having experienced similar things. And this goes into the most heart-wrenching and brutal moment of this manhwa, as right when it seemed like a peaceful resolution was coming, the shock of bombs dropped results in a spray of gunfire, where the other boy and the main girl die. With that single shot of her lying on the ground dead, a grim reminder that dreams and hope can't stop a bullet, and just how quickly a future can be shattered. And even after all this, the boy still persists, hoping that as long as he continues forward, it'll be okay. the ocean, not only a symbol of an unachievable goal, but also a sign of the world itself telling the boy to stop, that there's no place left for him to go, with the colour used here helping to emphasise the complete opposite emotion that was felt earlier, sadness. As the weight of what has happened starts crashing down on the boy, and what hurts even more is just how close everyone was to safety. As the boy ends up getting rescued and is now forced to live with the guilt of killing someone, along with the pain of losing those important to him. And it hurts because all the children were so close to being saved, with the emotional side of this manhwa being done incredibly well. And that's the thing about war, even if you survive it, a part of you dies because of it, and you can still lose a tremendous amount. The next time we see the boy, he's an old man, who has shut himself off from the rest of the world, choosing to live his life in solitude far away from civilization. With his eyes being much more sunken and hollower, scarred by the events of the past, where previously his eyes were much wider and more hopeful where we see he ended up building the house that him and the girl wanted to live in, but no tree in sight, which was the girl's side of the wish, and a representation that their wish was never able to fully come true, and with the isolation of living alone starting to grow on him, which the art portrays unbelievably well, it feels like it's headed towards a sour conclusion, until on a random day, he encounters a man and a woman, and he's instantly reminded of the other boy and girl that died with him, deciding to leave them alone. However, the man and the woman, despite their language barrier and having a gun pointed at them, reach out to the now old man and show him some genuine kindness, offering him some of their fruit, choosing not to judge him and instead try to understand him, with him initially rejecting their offers. But after waking up and seeing the fruit at his doorstep, he chooses to eat it, which helps to show that he is beginning to open up to them ever so slightly, and he returns their kindness with kindness of his own, and from this they are able to form a friendship, and it's clear that human connection plays a big role in this manhwa, as being surrounded by those who show genuine kindness can really help in finding happiness from the world. As when the girl died, it was also like his reason to continue moving forward died in that moment as well. Another constant theme is that of death, and coming to terms with being forgotten about, with war making human life seem futile and almost worthless. And this brings us to the most integral moment that this manhwa has to offer, as a giant wave comes crashing in and sweeps away the man. With the old man choosing to dive in to rescue him, 
as he refuses to see another innocent person die. And the scene where he rescues the man is also in a sense him rescuing himself from his trauma and fear of dying, which was visualized in that sense of him drowning as a boy, with him reaching over the horizon into a place much warmer and nicer, a visual representation of reaching a better place, a well-deserved happy end for a character who suffered so much, as he grows into a much kinder person despite all the tragedy and was able to find true peace and happiness in his life, with the man and the woman being his new reason to move forward and to give him something worth living and dying for, almost as if they were actually family, with him to some degree getting the family he never really had. And in the final moments of this manhwa, we see the old man on the boat reaching out to a glowing hand. My interpretation of this was him no longer being afraid of death, being proud and happy with the last few years of his life as he comfortably accepts its warm embrace without resistance. Which was a really beautiful end to this manhwa. I broke down reading this manhwa. I have never experienced war in my life, but this depiction of war from the bystander's point of view is one of the most gripping and unforgiving depictions I have ever read. With the art and visual representation helping to reinforce the message and themes of this manhwa extremely well. And while the idea of being forgotten about when you die can be scary, there's an understanding that if you have someone who genuinely cares about you, you will never be forgotten. And you will continue forward in their memory. This is a manhwa I will never forget about. Thank you all for watching and subscribe if you like the video.